Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23, where I have not yet made it into orbit. I haven't made it into orbit, but I'm hopeful this time. I've done some redesigning off-screen, but let's talk about this for a sec. Um, it's, it's good to remember that the Atlas rockets, for instance, the one that got the Mercury capsule into orbit, uh, had a mass of about 120 tons. This rocket that I'm building right now only has a mass of uh, 57.8 tons. The Atlas rocket had a payload mass, the capsule itself, of about 1.3 tons. Whereas I think I'm bringing up 0.9 on this. So we are, we are working with a good rocket here as far as efficiency is concerned. Um, the base thrust of our center rocket for the first stage is 822. This LR-89 was used in the later Atlas launch vehicles, I think. Our, it, the, the complication with the Atlas launch vehicle is that it actually had um, a skirt of boosters. So it would uh, take um, fuel from this tank and then have a booster stage and then dump the booster stage and then continue with the center tank. So it was sort of like that. So I don't remember if it had this engine on the original. There's a lot of variants of the Atlas, so I, I don't remember if it was the LR-89 on the Atlas that launched the Mercury capsule. Um, anyway, but uh, the reason why I've been able to get it efficient uh, is because I've replaced off-screen the, the stage with seven of these corporal sustainers with a single RL-10A3. Now this was used in the Saturn 1 vehicle and also later Atlas, Titans, it's a very, it's a favorite one of, uh, of a lot of launch vehicles. So uh, I'm gonna start my use of it now. It does sort of poke through the this stage here, but it doesn't look too bad. So I'm not going to fret over it too much. Anyway, so that's that. I've also re redone the top probe pretty extensively. I have decided that it doesn't need rockets, basically. Uh, I've decided that uh, putting rockets on it was uh, unnecessary. And so what it's got is it's got a huge heat shield here. You can see that. And hopefully the heat shield will cover the RCS ports. Hopefully. And I've of course mounted the RCS ports up top here so that they can work without uh, you know shoving their propellant into the heat shield or anything like that. And so this is it. I've put the four antennas down somewhat uh, in honor of Sputnik uh, because it had those four uh, things coming off the bottom there. But otherwise uh, this is just an RCS tank now. There's no uh, main fuel tank. This is just hydrazine. So this will be our probe, and and yeah, let's try and get this into orbit. So I've uh, reduced the mass of the probe, and hopefully, and uh, negated the need for a third stage. So the big problem I was having was that we didn't get into orbit on the second stage. It's imperative that we get into orbit on the second stage. Now another benefit of using the RL10 is that it does have thrust vectoring. It technically has a vectoring range of 6, but I've limited that to 3, just for sanity's sake. Um, it does need, and this is important, okay, I have to point this out. It needs a tiny bit of liquid fuel and oxidizer to light, and so that's what we have here. We've got, we've technically got enough for two lightings, though we're not going to light it twice. Um, the rest is just uh, liquid H2 and oxygen. So I had to make sure to have the lighter fluid in there, and we do. So that's good. And the on only thing is that our thrust on the base stage does get to pretty high levels, so we are going to experience some serious g-forces when we stage. On the bright side you can see how much thrust the second stage now has, and uh, that will be better. That means that the second stage will burn quickly get us into orbit while we are in communication range. Remember, that's the other thing. We have to be in communication range with it when it finishes orbit, otherwise we're, we're sort of in trouble. Okay, so... So yeah. 
you seen you see I've extended the fairing here in order to wrap around the, the um, which got uh, oh come on heat shield to wrap around the heat shield and really that's a good thing because it also sort of smooths out the fact that we've got this weird ring for the RL10 here uh, by the way, the reason we have that sort of thing here instead of it uh, connecting to the bottom is because of real engines and the way the nodes have been reconfigured in order to in order to um, allow us to attach many engines to any given stage, which will become important for the later rockets. Right now we're just doing... and you saw that with the Corporal Sustainer. Alright, I think all good things have been spoken for, so this is State Putnik 5, but in the uh, true Soviet uh, pattern, I think... Uh, if it's successful, we'll just call it Sput uh, Stay Putnik 1. Um, they, they, they didn't actually name any of their unsuccessful missions, so uh, that might be a, a wise pattern in this case. Alright, let's take it out to Launchpad and see how it does. Okay, so uh, SAS is on, throttle is up, and looks like we're a go. Oh, by the way, I compared this to the Atlas rocket because, of course, I'm using engines that would either be used in the original Atlas launch vehicle or in later Atlas rockets. However, of course, the main parallel will be to Sputnik because, after, Sput after all, Sputnik was the one that uh, first got a satellite into orbit. But uh, there's really no comparison there. Uh, Sergei Korolev was always aiming for very big things. Uh, obviously, uh, when he designed Sputnik, uh, the Sputnik rocket is an R7 rocket, and it was not meant for just getting a Sputnik into orbit. Uh-oh. What was that? Commutron 16 collided into... Okay, well that's not... Uh... I don't know why that would happen, but that is not a failure mode, I think. I wonder why one of the Commutron 16s fell off. But it looks like it's one of the ones from the top stage, so that's not critical. There's four of them on there. I, I'll have to check into why that would happen, though. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, Korolev designed the R7 to be more than just lobbing Sputnik up. After all, the R7 basically gets redesigned to launch practically everything else. Uh, and uh, compared to the Atlas, the Atlas uh, had a mass of 130 tons. Sputnik was more like 300 tons. And it had a thrust to match. It had a base stage thrust of, oh, probably around 4,000 kilonewtons. Somewhere around there. Probably a little bit more than that. I think it had four side boosters with 900 kilonewtons apiece, and then a center stage with 900 kilonewtons. So, way overkill, as usual, for Korolev. And that's really because he was always aiming for something much bigger. Uh, he was, for instance, aiming for the moon. Um, and, you know, uh, after doing the whole N1 rocket thing, and looking at how that performed, I really wonder whether he... I mean, he already knew that the uh, Americans were probably ahead on the space race and would probably get to the moon first. I wonder if he was thinking of doing a Mars flyby with that. It seems like it has enough power to uh, to launch a heavier vehicle and get through a Mars flyby. Uh, I'll have to try that out sometime. So yeah, no point comparing this to Sputnik. Uh, the Sputnik launcher was way, way bigger. So everything's good so far. Uh, G-forces are rising though. Overheating is subsiding. And we do sort of want this in a high orbit uh, like last time. We haven't... we should have enough Delta V for that. And... I want it in a high orbit because we want to maintain communication for a longer period of time. All right, we're flat out. Uh, now for the sustainer stage, if we can get through the G-force peak here.
All right. Oh, I do love the sound of that RL-10. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, try and... I probably hot group this, but let's just uh, extend it like this. Activate. I'm also going to press 2 in order to extend the ones on the probe itself. I'm pretty sure those are still hotkeyed. Yeah, this is a great sound for this rocket. We are not short on uh, on fuel. We should be good with that. The key is to make sure that this stage finishes before the KSC recedes into the horizon. That's that's it. We might as well tilt a bit down. Actually, we are. Uh, our apoapsis doesn't need to be excessively high. It would be good to have a periapsis above... Where, where would it be good? Uh, periapsis above the KSC would be good. I wonder if we can contrive that. If we can get our apoapsis like, to the other side of the globe, that, that would help. Remember, we have to, if we want to bring this thing back down, and I do want to bring this thing back down, we have to be able to communicate with it just as it's getting to parachute level. So we have to be in communication range when we want to prop, pop the parachutes. And that means we have to be above the KSC when we win, need to bring it down. Okay, well, I'm going to try and limit the apoapsis as much as possible. Obviously, if I calculated this right, I should never have to do this sort of thing, but, but here we are. Okay, that's good enough for me. Not bad. Not bad. Um, doesn't look like it's uh, past the horizon, though. Uh, maybe we should use the second ignite. I mean, we've got uh, 40 ignites here, but uh, technically we only have one... Let's see if fuel's stable. Fuel's stable, okay. All right. Well, that's that's all we can do with that engine now. Okay, yeah, look, look, periapsis on the continent. That's excellent. That's what I want to see. All right. That will do nicely. Uh, we're still connected. Let's drop the fairings and that and use RCS to push us off. Okay, that separation looks good. Um, but our... Uh-oh. I, I guess it didn't activate these yet. Okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. Whew. Thought I had them. But then again, if one commutron just falls off, I, I don't know if I did things right. Alright, so we have those up. Thankfully, we weren't uh, outside of the range of the one that's automatically connected. Uh, where is it? This guy. So, that's nice. Um, let's just make sure our solar panels are sort of facing the sun optimally. We, we have one on either side, so it's sort of like, one will be getting it. Alright, SAS off, I mean RCS off. And, well, I guess we can turn SAS off. It's still a electric charge drain. I guess that's because of the antennae. I, I should only have one out. Deactivate that. That will hopefully reduce the electric charge drain. Alright. Now, activate data recorder. Let's not forget our science here, even though we're finally in orbit. We're finally in orbit, darn it. Oh, man. Okay. Um, and take that sample. 
But we do have to do one thing that Sputnik did not have to worry about, and that's coming back. At least if we want to get this science we do. What is... Oh, those, those, that's our staging. Okay. Look like a new moon there. <laughs> okay, so... If this is the periapsis, then what we want is we... Okay, we've got no connection anyway. Alright. Let's zoom out. That's what the situation looks like. Let's time warp a bit. Until we regain connection. There's nothing we can do until we get connection back. So there it is, little guy, skirting across the globe. Okay. So yeah, I mean, a uh, lot of tinkering off-screen, obviously, just getting rid of the... I mean, it was very simple. It was just putting the RL-10s on the second stage, getting rid of the RCS stuff on the second stage, because, of course, the RL-10s have the gimbling, which uh, saved that. The RL-10s are also pretty light, so that also saves some mass in order to uh, get more fuel efficiency. And then getting rid of the rockets on the third stage and just having RCS here. So RCS will be used to deorbit us, and hopefully that'll work. Electric charge is an issue. We really only have enough electric charge to orbit once. So, yeah. I don't know why the solar panels don't seem to do much recharging, but... Oh well. Um, let's see now. As soon as we get into connection range, I need to start deorbiting quickly. Because we really only have until, you know, visual range of the KSC before... I'd like to land right at the KSC, because then I know I can pop the parachutes, but... Oh, come on. Give me connection. Give me connection. This is good enough. Wow, really? Looks like we could have gone for two orbits, but... It's hard to see... Have I done something wrong here? Did I retract too many of the... No, we've got a commutron out. Yeah. So, why for does this not get connection? Seems to me it should have connection by now. Oh, finally. Okay, well, let's quickly do this. Um, RCS on. Retro... Well, we don't actually have to... Orient Retro. Ooh, that was bad. Okay, come on, come on. Oh, that's because I don't have our SAS on. Alright. Okay, uh, but we oriented Retro, but that's good because we do need to do that eventually. For the heat shield. Let's just burn like crazy here. Burn like crazy and hope we have enough time. We can sort of see the KSC over there. I don't think we have enough time. Hmm. Our apoapsis is way too high. So yeah, I don't think the RCS itself might be enough to pull us down. Obviously we can't uh, burn at our apoapsis to bring our periapsis down because we can't communicate with this at our apoapsis, so that is not an option. What might be an option is maybe something drastic like, which way around would it be? Like this? Yeah, okay, I think I can do that ways. Then on the second pass around, we can uh, bring it down. Or maybe not. I don't think uh, the hydrazine is gonna last. 
Okay, well, um, theoretically in the atmosphere, but uh, you know what? I don't think we're gonna have the patience to wait for it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, and not only that, the electric charge will be depleted. It'll have to take multiple orbits to come back down, and the electric charge will be depleted by that point. So we won't be able to uh, initiate the parachutes. Okay, but it was close. Um, right idea. There's the KSC floating by. And perhaps a little bit more hydrazine. We could probably afford that because we had fuel left over in the in the second stage. And really, uh, perhaps the additional hydrazine and additional mass will allow us to keep our apoapsis a little bit lower. So, alright, so let us go back to the VAB and see what we can do about that. So, we have made orbit, but now retrieving the vessel from orbit is the name of the game. And... That requires a little bit more hydrazine. Now, I don't know why one commutron was falling off. I also don't why, know why my action groups weren't working. Let's fix this right now. Okay. Let me try and get this one on number one. Okay, well, it's ready. Well, let me just make sure. Toggle that one. See, I mean, it's got a toggle. Okay, that's the, it is. Let me double check that this is the right. Come on, give me the commutrons. Oh, silly probe core. There we go. All right, so but this. Okay, all right. That's fine. Now more hydrazine. Let's say 0.25 tons worth. Well, let me refill the tank to make sure I... Well, it says it's it's right, so that's fine. 0.25 tons doesn't sound too bad. The RCS ports might be in danger, though. If, if even uh, slightly... Yeah, I mean, they, they might be in danger of overheating. This far out... Probably they'll catch some some heat there. They've got a heat resistance of 1450. Well, uh, we'll try. Well, let's change one variable at a time and see how this works before messing around with those. So one variable changed. It's the quantity of RCS, and well. Let's just keep at this and launch again. Well, there's a little bit less drama about this launch, but uh, we do we have changed the masses a bit, which should make it fly better if anything. So let's go. Actually, it's funny, the mass of the heat shield is greater than the mass of the actual probe. Sort of strange, but there you are. Once again, I'm going to try and get this reasonably high, but I, I want to try and get my periapsis high, not my apoapsis. But that's difficult to do from this end. Obviously, this is the periapsis end. So, it's easier to lift your apoapsis when you're from oh does that still commutatron 16 collided in I don't understand at all I mean it's not like it should be activated at the start anyway I mean otherwise the other three would be they were added as uh, I mean added symmetrically so I don't get that I do not understand why one of them would fall off but the other three wouldn't if all four fell off, then I would understand what the heck was going on. So somehow inadvert inadvertently, I uh, I have 
discovered why it took so long between the first rocket that was capable of getting into space with the V2 uh, if you define space as a hundred kilometers or more uh, which obviously in this version of uh, okay we've got some overheating so let's tilt up a bit uh, in this version of uh, realism overhaul we more or less do 103 kilometers anyway um, so why it took so long between the V2 and the first orbital spacecraft I think we've discovered the reason for that lots of lots of issues lots of need to discover the properties of our atmosphere let's put it that way how long did it take it took uh, I mean if you say V2 is 1945 ish took about 12 years right Okay, well, let's flatten this out. I can't throttle this engine, so it's not like I can go modestly here. So all I can do is flatten out. Obviously, it'd be better to just follow the prograde vector down, but without being able to throttle this engine back, giving that, uh, given that it's now uh, putting out like a thrust-to-weight ratio of 10 to 15, yeah, well, now crossing 10, just gotta point it in the right direction okay I'm gonna activate the commutatron alright excellent off we go our horizon issue seems to be alright let's keep the apoapsis down then uh, extend the um, commutatrons on the payload using uh, action group 2 and normally they would actually have a payload camera well not not in the early stages obviously in of space flight but and nowadays they would maybe I should just jettison one fairing to check out whether the antennae have uh, extended properly Pointing down doesn't really help, I guess. Okay. We've basically got the same situation anyway. Okay, let me uh, jettison this one first. Yeah, our, our commutrons are extended. Oh, we've still got the other state but Nick up, right? Hmm. Interesting thought. Now. Could we re <coughs> sorry about that. Could we relight this in such a way as to bring our apoapsis down and our periapsis up? Yeah, sort of like this. We we really don't need to bring our periapsis up that much, but yeah, um, what's the direction for this? Let me just see. Oh, of course we don't have any... Hmm. Yeah, there's no point. Because uh, I don't have any way of turning it around and fuel flow is unstable. Yep, nothing for it. Let's uh, jettison everything and uh, get this probe underway. Alright, probe is free. Let's get rid of this maneuver then. So attempts to keep the apple apps slow obviously have not worked. <laughs> oh. I don't need all the antennae open, so let me close a few. So we've got just the one.
and perhaps we can do some of the job of reducing our apoapsis here. Uh, it's not very efficient. It's actually better to reduce the periapsis. Yeah. Okay, okay, you. So, alright, we've lost connection. But uh, on the next pass, we'll endeavor to bring the periapsis down instead of bringing the apoapsis down. And that'll just be the way to go, I think. Alright, so... Yep, let's just follow it around. Don't want to miss the point where we finally regain connection. Looks like we're far away from it. Oh, that's nice. We're connecting through Stay Putnik. Of uh, yeah, okay, I can deal with that. All right, we're connecting through Stay Putnik Five. How do you like that? Now, which direction should I burn in order to bring my periapsis down? Probably straight down at this point. Uh, no, it's uh, we're past periapsis, so straight up. Uh, yeah. Which direction is our periapsis going? Oh, it's receding backwards. That's not good. Well, we'll do some of this here and then some of it past the KSC and maybe that'll bring our periapsis back closer to the KSC. Then we'll have to go one more time around and hope that the electric charge holds out for that. Well, the Commutron 16s are sure handy because they maintain automatic connections. Okay, so that's relatively half of the burn that I want to do. I need to get it into the atmosphere a little bit more than that. But let's uh, plot a maneuver for the rest of this. And... Okay, well that keeps pushing the periapsis back. Let's see, this, this, this brings it forward, but it doesn't do the right thing. Okay. So let's say we're a little bit more extreme. Well, that, that's going to be out of range. Oh, that's worse. Okay, we better burn now. Yeah. That just makes things worse. We need it to not bounce off of the atmosphere as well. So it can't be bouncing back up and going into orbit, otherwise we'll lose the electric charge and we won't be able to pop the parachutes. We need it down on one go. So that's a tricky business. And But we don't need it down too quickly because it's hitting its periapsis here. And we need it to get around here before we can communicate with the KSC in order to get the parachutes open. We have a lot of hydrazine, but that hydrazine is not going to be very useful unless we can communicate with it. So, it's like... Alright, well, uh, the best thing for us to do is sort of point retrograde here, 
because that means once we come around the planets we'll be pointing retrograde again which is the correct orientation and we won't be able to correct the orientation before it starts hitting the atmosphere so best to be in the generally correct direction right now all right well I don't think I can do too much more for this I could probably bring the apoapsis in but why why would I want to do that I wouldn't um, it's probably best to let the atmosphere pull that in so that'll take longer for us to come down all right so that's my thinking on this let's see if it works out I mean low probabilities here All right, here we go. Atmosphere time. I can't turn SAS on or off, but it won't matter. Oh, crikey. I neglected to include the rotation of the planet, so... So the planet has rotated in the meantime, I guess. And that means that my periapsis is in a totally different location than I thought it would be. Uh, no, we're probably not going to maintain communication like this. Beats me how I'm going to get my periapsis over the KSC, though. Yeah, I mean... Just logically, it's not going to end up over the KSC unless, you know, you do a burn at your apoapsis somehow. Or some really complicated burn. I guess I'd have to really tweak it using uh, using a maneuver node somehow but I didn't see how to do that I tried a maneuver node and I couldn't get the periapsis over the KSC without doing a pretty substantial burn so we this this rocket can get into orbit but I'm not convinced it can bring our payload back down the way this is going I do think we might need, uh, I guess, you know what? What we need is a communication satellite network, right? Because if we had a bunch of satellites like the Stay Putnik up, and we put them up at different times, okay, so, you know, obviously we've got this problem that we can only, we can only sort of launch everything in the same profile with the same apoapsis and periapsis because even if I change the payload mass it seems to end up that way. But if we do the launches at different times they'll end up in different locations in this orbit and and then we'll have a satellite network, right? Um, roughly similar orbits. I mean it won't be perfect because I can't get them in perfectly you know any sort of perfect orbit really but we could try it out. We could try out creating a satellite network. Alright, so and then we'll be able to communicate with these things properly and get a mission that can return our payload back to Kerbin or Earth safely. So that's the plan. Satellite network. Yep, well I guess that's the logical plan after you build uh, a launch system that can get something into orbit, right? Yep. Alright, let's time warp through this because this is going to take forever. Uh, Re-entry with, uh, with the real solar system and especially real Earth takes a long time. I've been uh, secretly developing a shuttle off to the side with uh, B-9 aerospace packs, uh, parts, obviously. I'm, I'm not going to EJ this thing or anything like that. For those who don't know about EJ on Twitch, go check out his space shuttle. That uh, a stock space shuttle with, uh, with, uh, with hinged doors and everything. Uh, that is something to behold, but I'm not going to try that because I'm not that good. Uh, so, B-9 aerospace parts, I've been trying to get a space shuttle in real solar system and and it's pretty good right now except for the whole landing part <laughs> the landing part is the problem I've, I've gotten it through re-entry now but re-entry takes like half an hour <laughs> it is a long long process and it's not a process oh we're going up again aren't we oh darn Uh, 
Uh, looks like it's going to be just... Uh, it should have been a little bit lower than 85 kilometers, but that's not, this is not bad, though. Honestly, um... So maybe 80 kilometers, because if it bounces up... Oh, we have communication. Huh. Uh, okay, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, we've got communication through the Sputnik 5, which shows the benefits of a uh, communication satellite system. So, let's fix this. Let's go down. Go down. Go down quickly. Suddenly, uh, suddenly the whole communication satellite thing seems not so bad. Yeah, I mean, it's a pain in, uh, regular KSP, the whole commsat thing, but... But it seems quite nice here. So I'm going to have to do more of that. Okay, um, have to make sure I do this right too. Okay, well this is... Nope. I'm trying to find the right direction to burn so that I bring my apoapsis down and periapsis. Oh, so I should be pointing up is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes, there we go, that's right. Okay, uh, this might actually be... Well, we'll have to see. Um, okay, what direction should I burn right now to get the periapsis really low? Uh, not the periapsis, apoapsis. Um, okay. Alright. We gotta be coming in pretty hot though. Need to leave a little bit of hydrazine to reorient myself retrograde. Basically we're Aiming directly down. And we're going back down now, so let's let's re reorient retrograde. There we go. And magically, through the magic of communications. We have a connection. Of course, it's real magic because, uh, well, I don't know. This I forget what the periapsis on the. I guess it is. I mean, it's barely in the atmosphere, so it probably wouldn't be brought down right now anyway. I mean, I was wondering whether it was only still there because it was on rails, but that's not true. It's it's still there because. Uh, the atmospheric drag at 103 kilometers wouldn't be enough to bring it down anyway. Mm, we're still a bit off of our intended position. Okay, stop that, stop that. Oh, we don't have any more RCS. Okay, uh, well, now we have to just hope that the heat shield is really, really heavy, which it is. Heavier than the rest of this satellite. And hopefully that will do its business. Come on. Okay, alright, alright. I think it's orienting fine. Well. Nothing for it. Let's see how it goes. Sort of lucky that uh, we got the connection through Sputnik 5. And we still have electric charge, which is also lucky. I think we're going to overshoot by quite a lot. Hmm. This might not be successful after all.
Yeah, because we're going to have the horizon problem again. As the KSC recedes into the horizon, we're not going to be able to engage the parachutes. And it's going to recede into the horizon quite quickly. Bye bye, KSC. And we're not coming down quickly enough. Okay, well, good to know for the future. But, wait, wait, there's still no. Stay put, Nick 5 is also going to be out of communication range soon. Don't know if they'll be able to help. We're actually uh, maintaining a direct communication with the KSC right now. It's got a communication with the KSC as well. But uh, I don't know how long it's going to be able to keep that up. Okay, here's re-entry. Uh, I'm most concerned about the temperature on the RCS port, so let's see how that works out. Uh, probably the one on the underneath is worst. Let's see. No. That's fifth negative fifty. Wait, uh, is Smekjeb having issues? That's the tank. What just? F oh, the commutatron. Right. Oh, well, that makes sense. Uh oh. No, the RCS thrusters seem fine. The service module, the tank here, seems to be absorbing some of the heat from the heat shield. G-forces are serious though, but that should be within limits. So we lost our commutatron, the one that was extended, obviously, because those snap off in the atmosphere, but we're still uh, connected using this one. And let's, in fact, just, uh, well, there's no point extending commutatron, it'll just snap off. So I think we're safe to engage parachutes. Let's uh, reduce time warp and go. Okay, well, uh, so even though it wasn't perfectly planned for success, uh, it wasn't planned for success at all, it, it, I really needed the communication satellites, but it so happened we had a satellite uh, in orbit that we could communicate through, and now it looks like our mission might be successful. We might bring back, I say might still, we might bring back our, our biological samples from orbit, and get that 100 science I've been pining for for so long. Of course, technically we didn't have to get into orbit, we just needed to get into space, but um, but yeah, orbit is, orbit is good. Oh darn, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to engage the data recorder this time, didn't I? I didn't even get the stupid experiment. <sighs> yeah, I never I never got the really forgot the science. That's just that's just stupid, isn't it? All right, well, it doesn't matter. We're we've got a system, we can use it, and we need to put more communication satellites up. That's that's my thing. We've got the technology, so... So let's make our situation a little bit better before we plunge ahead with the science. Alright, and we should get some points for just returning something from orbit, hopefully. I always seem to mess up something though. And this time it was just a data recorder. Whoa, lots of tumble. Okay, uh, settle down so I can press recover. 
All right, all right, we get the point. You're excited, but come on. I hope this isn't one of those infinity things. I'm gonna try and come on, come on. I'm clicking recover whenever possible. <laughs> this. Ah, there we go. Well, 10 science, not too shabby. I'm not going to spend it right now. We've got 69 science in total. Yeah, so the plan is we're just going to use the same system to put some commsats up. And then we'll be able to do better orbits and uh, bring, our, uh, bring our samples back down as intended instead of just hoping for the best. So, that's the plan. And... Uh, and yeah, well, we got to orbit this time, and uh, and that's a big load off my chest. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.